Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Um, we are doing short stories by Mark Twain. And um, those of you who uh, remember the, um, the history of Mark Twain will also know that Mark Twain is the pen name uh, and the actual name of the writer was Samuel Clemens. These short stories are slightly different from uh, the stories that um, we have discussed um, written by let's, somebody like, let's say, Poe. Uh, but you'll see that each short story is complete in itself. And um, if you remember from what I told you about the introduction to the short story and how it e evolved, one of the characteristics, the primary characteristic of a short story is that it is a narrative that can be read in one sitting. You don't have to uh, spend weeks or days reading it. You just sit, you read the story, and um, you are soon rid of the story because one complete action has been described or one complete character has been discussed and um, it's over and done with and you can just put it away. So Mark Twain is writing with a slightly um, humorous style, not so as to make you laugh outright, but uh, just to put a smile on um, your face. So um, we uh, have had um, a couple of uh, short stories. The one that we're going to have today is the story of the good little boy. And uh, one of the things that you need to remember about Mark Twain is that he's writing about um, the Western uh, states. The United States is divided not only into um, the northern states and the southern states, but it's also divided into the eastern coast, the east coast, and the western uh, states, that is the west coast. Um, and um, because there has been traditionally rivalry between the east and the west, between the north and the south, um, so uh, Mark Twain is writing specifically about um, the, um, the, the, the South, the Midwest, and the Western um, states. So let us see what he has in the story of the good little boy. Once there was a good little boy by the name of Jack Jacob Blivens. He always obeyed his parents, no matter how absurd and unreasonable their demands were, and he always learned his book and never was late at Sabbath school. Now he's talking about a good little boy, one who is a good Christian also, and who never misses church. So always does what his parents want him to do, um, and uh, never disobeyed them, never was late for school, always learned his lessons. He would not play hooky, even when his sober judgment told him it was the most profitable thing he could do. So he never bunked classes. How many of you bunk classes? Um, this boy, because Jacob Blivens was a good little boy, he never bunked classes. None of the other boys could ever understand him because he acted so strangely. He wouldn't lie. He just said it was wrong to lie. Now what Twain is going to tell us here is that we are told always to be good, to be honest, to maintain our integrity, to be sincere, never to tell a lie. But what you see here is um, a rather different aspect of life. So he says that Jacob Blivens was in school. He was surrounded by people who were telling lies, who were dishonest, who were cheating. And yet he never did because he said that it was wrong to tell lies. He was so honest that he was simply ridiculous. Ridiculous. 
the curious ways that 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 Jacob had surpassed everything. So Twain thinks that there was no other boy like Jacob Blivens, and then he gave ex gives examples of how Jacob Blivens was different from the other boys around him. He says he didn't play marbles on Sunday. He wouldn't rob birds' nests. That was what the young boys were doing. They would take the eggs out, and that frustrated the birds. And uh, whatever frustrated the birds uh, made them excited. He wouldn't give hot pennies to organ grinders' monkeys. You know, again, this is something that causes pain to the monkey. And uh, the monkey doesn't understand um, why it's being done. So he would probably scream. He didn't seem to take any interest in any kind of rational amusement. Whatever the other boys were doing, he did not want to do. He was separate. The other boys tried to understand him, but when they could not, they said that he was uh, afflicted. There was something wrong with him up here. And so they needed to take care of him. So surprisingly enough, all the other boys who were bunking school, who were torturing other creatures, um, they took particular care of Jacob Blivin so that no harm would come to him. So they tried their best to take such good care of him that no harm would come to him. This good little boy, this Jacob Blivens, he had just one uh, passion, and that was to read the Sunday school books. Now, the Sunday school books, um, you will have a better idea when I make a comparison with, uh, with, with other books that, are, that show the good side of human beings. What we call, let's say, the Islami books, um, or the books that show you uh, that good always prospers, that vice is always victorious, uh, uh, vice is always um, the loser, and that you must be virtuous, um, that honesty is the best policy. All these um, stories where goodness is victorious and evil is defeated uh, come under the category of Sunday school books because these are books that you want the young children to read so that they grow up to become good human beings. Now Jacob Blivens read the Sunday school books. He um, saw that there were good little boys who were rewarded, who uh, were given different presents. Uh, but what he read somehow was not what he expected. Because all these books that he read about good children, somehow or the other, towards the end of the book, the good child would die. And what frustrated Jacob Blivens was that he never got to meet any of the characters. He, when he looked around him, he didn't see any good little boys because there were all those, um, all those young men who were bunking classes, uh, who were torturing animals and other creatures, and who, who, who told lies to their parents and to their elders. So when Jacob Blivens looked around him, he could not see any good little boy. All that he could see was in the books. And in the books also, the good little boy would die. So he wanted to meet a live good little boy. And he couldn't. Um, whenever he started to read a story of a good little boy, the book would end with a picture of the funeral of the good little boy. And, and that sort of um, frustrated him because um, he wanted to meet a living good boy. He wanted to be a good boy um, himself and he was totally frustrated 
when in the last chapter um, he would find out that the good little boy died and there were so many people who came to his uh, funeral. So this um, sort of uh, built up in Jacob Levins's mind the idea that he should be in a Sunday school book, that his story should also uh, be um, related and uh, children should meet a living good boy. So um, th this was his one ambition. He wanted to have pictures of himself in the Sunday school book, pictures maybe giving money to a poor woman, uh, maybe um, helping someone cross the road. Uh, but the thing is, that for some reason um, he could not uh, find good boys uh, who, who were living. All that he heard about, all that he read about was good little boys having died. So this um, his, his, this led to um, his developing the ambition uh, of wanting to be in uh, a Sunday school book. He loved to live and this was the only thing that he didn't like about the Sunday school books that the good boy died at the end. He knew it was not healthy to be good. He knew it was more fatal than consumption to be so supernaturally good as the boys in the books. Um, and he knew that none of them had ever been able to stand it long. So he, he knew he was not living in um, a, a fairy world. He was living in the real world. He knew how he had to suffer uh, when he was good. Um, but he wanted his story to be a part of um, a Sunday school book. So uh, he, he, he was good, he worked towards that, and he hoped that someday, um, if he hung on long enough, his story would also be put in the book, and that this thing would happen before his death, so that there was one Sunday school book where the good little boy did not die. But somehow, um, nothing went right with the good little boy. Nothing ever turned out with him the way it turned out with the good little boys in the books. And here is where uh, Twain's story takes a new twist. A reality is very different from, um, from what is presented in the books. And particularly in this context, um, I'm referring to the Sunday school books, not to books in general, but just to the Sunday school books, um, the books to which Jacob Blivens had access. Um, these books showed that the good little boys were virtuous, honest, trustworthy, and therefore they prospered. They had an easy life. They had a good life because they were being good. Twain says that this is not what Jacob Blivens' experiences had been. So there must be something wrong somewhere. And he gives you examples of what Jacob Blivens sees and what he experiences and his impressions of um, those people, mostly um, young boys. So then he gives us different incidents of what happens to Jacob Blivens. He says that Jim Blake was one of his, um, one of the boys um, who were in the same school. And he says that when he caught Jim Blake um, stealing apples, he told him you shouldn't um, steal apples because I was reading the story where uh, a boy was stealing apples and he fell from the tree and broke his arm. So 
with the kind of luck that Jacob Blivens has, Jim Blake falls, but he falls on Jacob Blivens as Jacob Blivens' arm that gets broken. Nothing happens to uh, Jim Blake. Jim Blake wasn't hurt at all. Now this is something that the Sunday school books did not talk about. In the Sunday school books, the bad little boy, that is Jim Blake in this case, would have his arm broken. What happens in real life is that the good little boy has his arm broken because um, Jim Blake falls on him while he's stealing apples. And then another um, incident uh, is related by Twain where he says a blind man was pushed into the mud. Jacob ran to help him and to receive his blessing, thinking, because he had been reading Sunday school books, that by helping the man, the man would uh, call down blessings upon him, would wish him well. But what happens is that because the man is blind, when he goes up to him, the blind man thinks that Jacob Blivens is the person who pushed him in and now he has come to rescue him. So what he does is that he has a stick. You know, blind people carry that white cane. He has a stick with him. Even in those days, um, blind uh, people had to carry sticks so that they could make their way um, out of um, the house. So he takes up his sticks and he beats Jacob Blivens over the head. And um, Jacob Blivens can't understand it because there was nothing in the books that said that if you try to help a blind man, the blind man is going to try to kill you. There's nothing in the books about that. And yet that is what actually happens. One thing that Jacob wanted to do was to find a lame dog that hadn't any place to stay, was hungry and persecuted and bring him home and pet him and have that dog's imperishable gratitude. Now dogs are supposed to be very faithful animals, they're very loyal animals. And uh, the Sunday school books taught um, Jacob Blivens that if he were to take care of a lame dog, uh, a dog that um, children were throwing stones at maybe or otherwise beating him up. If he were to bring such a dog uh, and sort of save him from that situation, the dog would have eternal gratitude to show for this one act. But what happens when he brought him home and he had uh, fed him Jacob Blivens wanted to pet the dog, thinking that he has done a good deed and the, and the dog will always be grateful to him. So what does the dog do? He flies at him, he tears all of Jacob Blivens' clothes off and generally he messes up um, Jacob Blivens so much that he's totally flabbergasted and he says, what is happening here? I've saved this dog, I gave him food, he's supposed to be grateful to me and he attacks me. So this is not what the Sunday school book um, had told him to expect. Whatever this boy did, and this is the sort of crux of the whole story, whatever this boy did, he got into trouble. The very things the boys in the books got rewarded for turned out to be about the most unprofitable things he could invest in. So what was acceptable in the books was not acceptable in real life and this is where the dichotomy comes in. What is said in the books may not necessarily be the way things are in reality. Now he was taught lessons by these Sunday school books. You do good, 
and you will have good done unto you. It's totally reversed. He does good, he is honest, he is generous, he is kind um, and yet the reward that he gets is, is not kindness in the same measure. It's totally different, it's totally um, contradictory. So Jacob Blivens cannot reconcile reality um, with what is described and discussed in the Sunday school books. He says um, he, he, he once saw um, some boys going off in a sailboat. Now he was worried because um, the Sunday school books had told him that Sunday was the day that all good people went to church and anyone going off on uh, something that made them happy and missing out on Sunday church would, um, would be punished, would be punished by for example if somebody is going sailing um, those boys were supposed to drown. So what Jacob Blivens does is when he sees this boy setting out, he uh, sets out to warn them. He takes a raft and he goes out so that he can warn them that you know today is Sunday, you shouldn't be out sailing, you should be in church. So what happens is that instead of something happening to those boys, Jacob's raft is overturned and he ends up by being nearly drowned. So he's pulled out, um, he's, he's pulled out of the river by a man, his stomach is pumped for, uh, for water so that he can spew it out and he ends up in bed for God knows how many days. Now he's the good little boy, he's trying to do good, he's trying to spread um, virtue and goodness. But he's the one who, go, who gets nearly drowned, he fa falls ill because he's got a cold also. But the boys who went out um, in, um, in the sailboat are perfectly alright, they had a wonderful time. They're bad boys, they're supposed to be suffering, but there's no suffering for them the suffering is only restricted to Jacob Livens' um, case. When he got well, and you know he was in bed for a number of days, when he got well he was a little discouraged but he resolved to keep on trying. He knew that so far his experiences wouldn't do to go in a book but he hadn't yet reached the allotted term of life for good little boys. Now in spite of the fact that um, he is a little discouraged, he uh, he's determined to keep on trying. Remember he still wants to get into the Sunday school book but what he's afraid of is that by the time he gets his name in the Sunday school book he will be dead because he has not seen any living characters uh, in the Sunday school book. So he keeps on trying and he, uh, he, he reads uh, what good boys are supposed to be doing and one of the things that good little boys uh, are supposed to do is that they serve on a ship. So he calls on a ship captain, he uh, makes an application and when the uh, captain asks for recommendations he uh, pulls out a document that his teacher has given him and which says that um, Jacob Blivens is a good boy but on a ship that is not a requirement, that's not merit on a ship. So the captain asks him, well your teacher says you're a good boy, 
I don't see anything here that says that you can wash dishes or that you can empty a slop pail and if you can't do these things well what would you be doing on a ship and Jacob Blivens' idea that his teacher's recommendation will work anywhere just falls flat this is th and 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 he's shocked because um, his teacher has complimented him it's a written piece of paper it's a document a tract as he calls it and um, the, the books that he has read um, the Sunday school books in those books whenever a boy showed anything written by his teacher the sea captain would start crying thinking of his own school teachers and say all right you uh, come and serve on the ship reality is totally different the captain says do you know how to wash dishes do you know how to empty pails if you can't do that I don't want you on the ship at all so he cannot believe himself he thinks that something has gone wrong with him because in the book the sea captain always sees that tract or that document and feels very emotional uh, about this and says okay you come and serve on the ship this boy always had a hard time of it nothing ever came out according to the authorities with him whatever he had read life was very different from that at last one day when he was around hunting up bad little boys to admonish he found a lot of them in the old iron foundry fixing up a little joke on 14 or 15 dogs they tied 14 or 15 dogs in a procession and they were going to tie empty nitroglycerin cans to their tails boys can be very cruel you know this and this is one of the things um, that they um, that they very frequently do capture little animals creatures torture them that sort of gives them uh, a sense of uh, superiority so when he sees these dogs and these boys um, who have captured these dogs and are in the process of um, tying these uh, nitroglycerin cans to um, their um, tails uh, he's very upset he sits down on one of the cans um, and he takes hold of the collar of the dog in the front and he looks at Tom Jones who is one of the boys who is torturing the dogs just at that moment Alderman McWelter full of wrath stepped in now here is Jacob Blivens holding on to the collar of the dog and there are these 14 or 15 dogs who have been tied together and the alderman um, who is a politician and uh, an official of the town he comes up and he sees Jacob Blivens holding on to the collar now what Jacob Blivens is trying to do is to save the dogs but when he is captured in that position the alderman believes that Jacob Blivens has tied all these cans the other boys run away they escape and um, Jacob Blivens is caught it's almost as if he's caught red-handed now in a Sunday school book the alderman would know at once that Jacob Blivens was trying to um, to save the dogs but here um, things turn out differently and the alderman does not wait to um, hear an apology or an explanation from Jacob Blivens he takes him by the ear turns him around and gives him a whack in the rear um, and he uses such a lot of force that and this is where Mark Twain starts to exaggerate he says that Jacob Blivens soared towards the sun with the fragments of those 15 dogs 
stringing after him like the tail of a kite. And there wasn't a sign of that older man or that old iron foundry left on the face of the earth. So what happens is that those, just to go back to the um, previous slides, when, um, um, when all the older man um, strikes Jacob Blivens on the rear, on his bottom, Jacob Blivens is hurt, but more than the hurt, what happens is that those cans of nitroglycerin that have been tied to the dogs, they explode. Remember, they had been tied to the tails of the dogs and um, what the what the bad boys had been trying to do was to have a huge explosion uh, and they would have enjoyed it the older man steps in contrary to what is written in the books the older man thinks that Jacob Blivens is doing it so he strikes Jacob Blivens on the rear and that triggers off the explosion. And so Jacob Blivens, he says, soars towards the skies. You know, there's this huge explosion. Everything blows up. So this is something that Jacob Blivens um, never expected. Remember when he's um, talking about his Sunday school books, he mentions the fact that um, the good little boys whose story is told in, um, in, in the Sunday school books always um, die, but before they die, they make a dying speech. Now this dying speech is supposed to be the moral of the story. This dying speech is supposed to um, convey to the readers the idea that goodness is rewarded, virtue is rewarded, and evil dishonesty, vice is always punished. That, that's the moral or that's the dying speech that the good little boy makes in the Sunday school books. Here what happens is when this explosion occurs everything blows up including Jacob Blivens, including the alderman and of course those 14 or 15 dogs, those who've been tied together and have nitroglycerin cans tied to their tails. Everything blows up. And here's another contradiction um, that um, that is made between reality and the material of uh, the material of the Sunday school books. The Sunday school books show the good little boy dying but dying in bed. Dying in bed surrounded by his friends, his family, and he makes this beautiful speech and, his, and this speech advocates um, the spread of um, virtue and honesty, um, truthfulness, integrity, sincerity. But that's not how things happen in real life. Everything that has happened to Jacob Livens has been in contradiction to what he read about. So that 
that little death scene that he visualizes, you know, when there are so many things that are happening to him, he says, well, you know, maybe I can make that dying speech. Uh, and that is how I will get into uh, a Sunday school book. They'll write a whole book about me. Um, and Twain, in order to create a little humor, a, a little sarcastic humor, says that he didn't get to make his dying speech um, unless he made it to the birds because although the bulk of him came down all right in a treetop in an adjoining county, so that dying speech that he's supposed to be making, he never gets to that. When there is this explosion, everything blows up. The dogs are reduced to pieces of flesh. Uh, Jacob Blevins' body blows up and the explosion is so huge that um, Twain says that um, he flew over the birds and uh, the greater part of his body landed in the adjoining county. He didn't even um, have his whole body in one county. And he says the alderman was blown up, the, um, the iron foundry fence, nothing was left on the earth. Everything blew up and when um, after the explosion the debris settled down, it was just bits and pieces of the dog, bits and pieces of the alderman's body, bits and pieces of Jacob Blivens. He never got round to making his dying speech unless he made it to the birds as parts of his body were flying over the birds. Um, so it's not like he had envisioned, it's not what he had um, thought he was going to, um, to, to experience. Um, thus perished the good little boy who did the best he could but didn't come out according to the books. Every boy who ever did as he did prospered except him. His case is truly remarkable. It will probably never be accounted for. So um, this is how this good little boy comes to an end. Although books had given a totally different um, viewpoint. In the books, virtue prospered, honesty prospered, um, integrity was rewarded. But in real life, nothing of the sort happens to Jacob Blivens. Whenever he tries to do good, the tables are turned on him and instead of being rewarded, he's the one who gets punished. Um, he and the, the people who do bad things, who are dishonest, who are disrespectful, um, they always prosper. So um, M Mark Twain says that this is how the good little boy ended and his words are, thus perished the good little boy who did the best he could but didn't come out according to the books. Now Twain is being a little harsh here because um, he's, he's criticizing the Sunday school books in particular because they give um, an aspect of life that is not true. And children who read the Sunday school books read about a world that does not exist a world which exists only in the books. Real life, things are totally different. In real life, um, you don't have things happening um, the same way that they are described in the Sunday school books. In real life, what happens is that poor Jacob Blivens, after living a very good life, does not even get the opportunity to make a dying speech, does not get the opportunity to meet his near and dear ones, 
he perishes because of an explanation uh, of because of an explosion or a trick that other boys have planned that other boys have executed he has nothing to do with tying those nitroglycerin cans to the tails of the dogs all that he wants is to relieve those dogs of their misery he knows what is going to happen he takes such a big risk um, with the understanding that because in the uh, in the the Sunday school books the good boy always um, dies in bed always dies surrounded by his family and friends that is how it's going to be with him he doesn't realize that if um, those books have not been true to real life then there are chances that they will not be true to real life in this instance also he does not realize that when he starts to um, to try to free the dogs when he starts to um, make this attempt the alderman comes up the alderman makes a speech he gives him one whack on the behind and that sets off um, this series of explosions remember you have 14 or 15 dogs and to each one of them is tied a can of nitroglycerin so when one explodes there is what is known as the domino effect and the others are triggered off by that explosion so that they are 14 or 15 explosions but they sound like one gigantic explosion this gigantic explosion that takes place it takes um, not just the dogs with it it takes Jacob Blivens it takes um, the alderman it takes the, uh, the the iron foundry fence everything that is in the vicinity um, is blown up by this series of explosions that are triggered off when the alderman hits Jacob Blivens um, on his behind so um, you know th th this is something that is not a part of what uh, poor Jacob Blivens read in the Sunday school books he had a totally different impression and he wanted to um, to be a part of um, the Sunday school books before I uh, wind up today's lecture I'd like to quickly go through uh, what we have done today in this um, short story by Mark Twain that is titled um, the story of a good little boy um, towards the end of uh, the story Mark Twain says that I have taken this story from a floating newspaper item um, which is an anonymous and um, the newspaper item states that there was an explosion um, in the iron foundry and uh, the result of the explosion was that one boy and the older man were killed along with 14 or 15 different dogs this is Twain's interpretation of that news item now mind you in the newspaper um, there is no story there's just that news item that says that a young boy 14 or 15 dogs and um, alderman so and so died in an explosion um, in the iron foundry and it gives the date time and place what it does not give you is the story behind the news item so Mark Twain at the end adds a sort of um, note to the story and says I've taken this from a floating newspaper item and I do not know uh, who wrote it down but my interpretation is 
what I have given you. And what he gives us is this good little boy named Jacob Blevins, who, who is good through and through. There is no evil in him. Um, he does not cause pain to anyone. Um, he is honest. Um, he is good. He is virtuous. Um, he helps people. He never bunks classes. He never misses out Sunday school. He's a good little boy and his aim is to spread goodness um, throughout the world. So in this attempt to spread uh, goodness, he, um, he does various things because he reads the Sunday school books um, very, very um, religiously. He goes to, um, to, to church. Um, he never misses out on church. But in spite of that, he feels that there's something lacking in him. He uh, tries to help people and um, everything sort of uh, bounces back. Um, he tries to help uh, a man who has been uh, pushed into a swamp by bad boys and when he tries to pull the man out the man thinks that he has pushed him in so he whacks him with the stick he sees uh, some boys um, going out on a sailboat on Sunday he thinks it's wrong of the boys so he sets out in pursuit of them to remind them that it is Sunday and they should not be doing that. They should be attending Sunday church. So when he um, sets out on a raft, the raft is overturned. He gets hit by a log. He nearly drowns. Um, he's saved by a man, but he has to spend days in bed because he falls ill. He's got a cold also. Um, so everything that can possibly uh, go wrong with him does go wrong with him. Um, in, in Sunday school books, he reads that good little boys are rewarded. Uh, and um, his aim is to be uh, a part of a Sunday school book. He desperately wants his story to be told in a Sunday school book. But the problem is that the the morals and the instructions of the Sunday school book do not match what happens in real life. In the Sunday school books, for example, um, the good little boy always dies at the end and is taken to the heavens. Uh, but while he is on his deathbed, his whole family and all his friends surround him and he makes a dying speech. Um, wherein he says that uh, I am glad of the support that you've showed me uh, and I die happy because I'm going to meet God, I'm going to meet my maker um, and um, he, you know, he makes a speech that is, um, that, that is very moralizing and that is um, sort of instructional. So um, this speech, he's robbed of the opportunity or the chance to make that speech because when he dies it is as a result of somebody else's doing. Um, he doesn't die a natural death, he doesn't die in bed. He dies as a result of an explosion and this explosion takes place because some boys um, like torturing dogs so they capture 14 or 15 dogs, tie them together and then tie nitroglycerin cans to their tails. Now, um, when Jacob Bliven sees this, he wants to relieve them of this agony. So he catches hold of the collar of the first dog and uh, he attempts to, uh, to remove that can of nitroglycerin that has been tied to him. But while he is in the process and he just has his hand over the collar of the dog, the alderman comes in, the public official comes in who has a lot of authority.
um, who serves in a public office. He sees Jacob Blivens with his hand on the collar of the dog and he does not think that Jacob Blivens is trying to relieve them of these cans. He thinks that Jacob Blivens is in the process of tying those cans. So he doesn't listen to Blivens' explanations. He just catches him by the collar, whacks him from the behind, on the behind, and what happens is there's this huge series of explosions. And it looks as if it's been one explosion because these dogs are tied together and these cans are tied to their tails. So when there is this um, series of explosions that are triggered off by the alderman um, hitting uh, Jacob Blivens on the bottom, it takes not just those dogs with it, it takes Jacob Blivens with it, it takes um, the alderman himself with it, it takes that entire area is devastated because of the strength of the explosion. And Jacob Blivens' um, idea of um, making a dying speech is totally frustrated because um, Twain says that um, when the explosions take place, Blivens' body is blown up because he's so close to uh, the dogs. His body is blown up, pieces of his body land uh, in the adjoining county. Um, that is how big the explosion is. The, the bad boys, they escape. The alderman doesn't even see the bad boys. The, the one who is punished ultimately is Jacob Blivens, just as he had been um, punished earlier when he had um, for example, when he had tried to, um, to get those boys to come back from sailing, um, when, when he tries to, um, to sign up on board ship, um, his, his, his desire is totally frustrated because the captain refuses to acknowledge his teacher's recommendation and he asks him, can you wash dishes? Can you empty slop pails? Can you clean decks? Because that's what we need people for. We don't want a recommendation from your teacher. We want a recommendation from a person who has seen you doing these things and who will vouch that you will do them well. So every attempt that Jacob Blivens makes um, to do good, uh, to be virtuous, to be uh, honest is frustrated. Every attempt is frustrated um, by the fact that reality is very different from, um, from what you find in the books. In the books, the good little boy dies in bed, makes a dying speech, has family and friends around him. Jacob Levens dies with only the older man there. Nobody knows what has happened. Nobody knows what Jacob Levens was trying to do. So his goodness, his virtue is not acknowledged. Nobody realizes that Jacob Levens was doing a truly noble thing by relieving these dogs of the nitroglycerin uh, cans. What um, the alderman doesn't realize is that Jacob Blivens is a good boy. He judges him on that one particular uh, instance and he delivers that punishment regardless of how it's going to impact him because you have to remember that the alderman also dies. He judges Jacob Blivens on the basis of what he sees. He does not wait for an explanation. Jacob Blivens tries to offer an explanation, but the alderman says, I'm not going to believe this.
I have seen you with my own eyes, with your hand upon the collar of one of the dogs, which is tied to 14 other dogs, and each one of them has a can of nitroglycerin tied to the tail. So the alderman believes not what Jacob Levens is trying to say, but what he sees. The evidence of his eyes for himself is more important than the explanation um, that, um, that Jacob Levens is trying to give. So what um, Twain is trying to emphasize here is that a reality is very different from how it is projected in the church. In the church, um, religious scholars, priests, ministers tell you do good, you will be rewarded. Do good, to be honest, um, show integrity uh, and sincerity and you will go to the heavens, you will go to paradise. Um, people will consider you uh, as somebody truly wonderful but the reality is very different. The reality, the stark naked reality is totally opposite. Goodness is not rewarded. Virtue is not rewarded. Evil is rewarded. Um, deceitful uh, people are rewarded. Dishonest people are rewarded. If you cheat, you prosper. If you are honest, um, you suffer. This is what um, Twain is trying to say. And um, this, the, this story he has based on um, an excerpt from a floating newspaper item. He's taken that item, he's built a whole story around it, and um, this is what uh, comes out in um, the story of the good little boy. But that is not to say that you stop doing good. What we have read is just Twain's opinion on, um, on, on goodness not being rewarded and evil ruling the world and um, being rewarded. So this has been based on a newspaper item and Twain has just um, taken that item and built a whole story around it. And, um, and, and it's interesting because um, although Twain has tried to create um, a little humor, especially towards the end of the story where he says that uh, Jacob Blivens did not get a uh, chance to make his dying speech unless he made it to the birds as he's, his body was being uh, transported uh, by the effect of the e explosion to the adjoining county. So he says that that's the only way uh, or the only place or time uh, when um, he could have made uh, the dying speech. So um, Twain is being sarcastic because he thinks that the church presents a very rosy picture of life. It, did, it does not prepare us um, to deal with different aspects of life. It tells us that virtue is rewarded and that evil is always punished. But what you see happening around you, what you see in the world around you, is that goodness is punished, goodness is not acknowledged, but uh, vice, evil, wickedness, um, theft, murder, any of the different categories, they are always rewarded. People who do bad deeds, who do evil deeds, um, are never um, pulled up. They are given to believe that what they are doing um, is fine and um, that they should uh, continue with it. Um, but good people do not um, get their just rewards in this world. Whether they get them in the next world or not, whether there is a next world or not, um, is something that Twain leaves um, up, to the, the, up to the reader's imagination.
but what he does uh, focus on is the fact that throughout his life Jacob Blivens tries to be a model a role model because his um, his overpowering ambition is that his story should be written in a Sunday school book because he's a good boy and Sunday school books only give stories of good little boys because they want to show that goodness is rewarded, that goodness is acknowledged and that evil is always punished. But um, Twain tries to show uh, how a good little boy uh, dies because he believes so much in the Sunday school books. He's not prepared to deal with real life. He's not prepared to um, take his take his place in, um, in, in the reality um, and in the actuality of the world. He's just not prepared because he has read his Sunday school books and he has all those lessons memorized. So um, an, an attack on, on, on church uh, and on the kind of teaching and preaching um, that is um, carried on in the church is what this whole story um, is trying to convey. I hope you've enjoyed um, studying it as much as I have enjoyed teaching it. Um, don't take um, Mark Twain too seriously. There's humor in his writings also and I want you to try to appreciate um, the humorous aspect also. So thank you for being patient and Allah Hafiz for now.